Hey guys, welcome back. So I had reviewed GT2e watch earlier and received requests of comparing the two watches from Huawei, that is the GT2 and the GT2e. Although GD2 is basically an older release from Huawei, I do find GD2 superior in some ways and in many other ways it's the same. Common myth is that GD2e is an enhanced version of GD2 watch, which is not true, it's actually inferior. Huawei says that watch is built for younger audience and the E stands for energy and enthusiasm, but in this case, I rather call it economy or entry level. As I was looking at the specification of these watches and all the stuff available on the internet, I came across different information for the watch on different sites that had nothing to do with facts. I will explain this but before that please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any future videos. Coming back, the RAM is an issue as we are not sure about the RAM on these watches. We checked Huawei's official website and found the RAM is not disclosed over there. As a result, many tech sites may claim different RAM size for the watch. I came across this website that seems credible. However, it mentioned the RAM on GT2e was 16GB, which is an increase from the previous 2GB on GT2. Now this is a total incorrect information. In today's date, 2GB seems like a very decent RAM for a smartwatch. However, with a storage of mere 4 GB, it doesn't make sense that Huawei has increased the RAM to 16 GB which is 4 times more than the storage. It's like a man having a brain bigger than his belly. So I went to another credible website and expected to get some more sensible information and there the RAM was 16 MB for the GT2e and 32 MB for GT2. This makes a lot more sense than 16 GB, however Huawei has to disclose the RAM officially therefore all the reviewers and website that claim might need to provide a proof from the manufacturer on the claim of RAM size. Don't trust the review websites 100%, not all the information is correct on these sites. As personally I do not know the RAM sizing, I have to assume it would be the same for GT2e and GT2 as I doubt Huawei would risk changing the architecture of a running design and device in production. This is again my opinion to which many of you might not agree with, so please share your comments if you have any advice on this. Moving on, let's go to the comparison of these watches. So I went and searched the watch on one of the credible websites that is GSM Arena. So I would say the website does provide somewhat accurate specification for the watch. So we're going to compare the Huawei GT2e smartwatch with GT2 model that was released 8 months earlier to show you the major changes in these watches, how they are similar and what makes these watches different. In comparison, I decided to give a twist to the tail. Not only are we going to compare these watches to each other, but we are going to compare them to one of the major flagship watch that is Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2. And this will give an idea of how far are these watches up to the market. First thing is the price. As you see, Huawei GT2e is the cheapest amongst the competition, slightly lower than its sibling GT2 and a lot cheaper than Samsung Watch Active 2. So as we scroll down to specifications, we see Huawei GT2e is latest comparing to other watches. Having a detailed view of dimensions, the body of GT2e is a bit longer than the GT2 watch. The GT2 is more circular and therefore has equal horizontal and vertical diameters. The strap of GT2e are not interchangeable as the GT2 can have Huawei straps and also can fit third party straps as well and so does Samsung Active 2. The E model is based on the 46mm version of the GT2 and has the same 1.39 inch AMOLED display with 454 by 454 pixel resolution. The bezel however is thicker so the watch measures 53 into 46.8 mm compared to 45.9 into 45.9 mm of the GT2. Another change is integrated TPU wristband which is perforated to improve breathability. The watch body is built out of stainless steel and is rated 5 ATM water resistant. Samsung however does have additional features like Samsung Pay, ECG, eSIM that Huawei doesn't have yet. Now let's see the display. All these watches have different touch screens, GT2e has AMOLED, most superior is the GT2 which is OLED, Samsung has Super AMOLED. All three of them have 16 million colors. However, the screen to body ratio is the best for Huawei GT2, which is 59%, more than Samsung 32.7%, which is worse among all three. The resolution of Huawei is actually better than Samsung by 25%, that has got 454 by 454 pixels, compared to Samsung resolution of 360 by 360 pixels. 
Ironically, Samsung has slightly better PPI than Huawei watches. Now let's have a look at the platform. OS platform of Huawei is called Huawei Wearable Platform, whereas Samsung has its infamous Tizen Wearable OS. But these are proprietary operating systems by the manufacturers. Now about the memory. Speaking about the memory, Samsung and Huawei has 4GB internal storage. The RAM is not disclosed, but this website which I consider a credible one says GT2e has a RAM of 16MB, which is lowest RAM amongst all the three watches, whereas GT2 has 32MB and Samsung has a whopping 1.5GB RAM. However, don't get excited, we still need Huawei and Samsung to confirm that. I still believe 32 MB RAM is way too less for any smartwatch to function. So this information is again not correct. I would say there are some websites that claim that the RAM is 512 MB, but we still need to confirm that. The rest of the features are the same apart from the battery. Huawei has a better battery life as the chipset on Huawei is a Kirin A1 that consumes lesser power and therefore can run for a longer time than the Samsung that runs on Exynos. Huawei GT2e and GT2 has the same 455mAh battery whereas the Active 2 is way behind with the 340mAh supporting wireless charging. So that wraps up today's review. If you intend to buy any of these watches, I have tried my best to provide you with all the information that I have for you to better judge and support your choice. I have also provided the discounted links to these watches for your convenience. Thank you for watching, please let us know what you think about this review. If you like it, subscribe for more videos like these and hope to see you soon in another exciting review. Have a great day, bye.